is the easiest method, um, but the thing is, it's not always the most efficient, okay? It's not always the most efficient. There are particular times when it is more efficient than others. For example, in number 20, whenever you have a system and one of the equations is solved for one of the variables, that's when substitution is great because what that first equation is saying is that y is equal to negative 6x minus 12. So that means in the other equation, we can replace y with that expression. So I'm going to do that. Now, I have to be careful here because it's negative y, so I need to put that in parentheses and apply the negative to what I have just substituted. And you'll notice that now my equation is no longer in two variables. It just has one single variable, which is very easily solved. Okay, so distribute the negative. So we get negative 6x plus 6x plus 12 equals 12. Now, this is kind of weird. Oh, this is kind of weird. Okay, negative 6x plus 6x, they're on the same side. You combine them x goes away. So we end up where this says just 12 equals 12. Um, that is a true statement. Okay, that is a true statement. Um, so that means that our um, solution is all real numbers. Okay, that's true, so that means the solution is all real numbers. I was hesitating there for a second because I was checking to make sure um, if instead of using substitution, if we were going to solve this by graphing, and we solved that second equation for y so that we could graph it, um, add the 6x to the other side, divide by negative 1, you'll notice we get the exact same equation. Okay, we get the exact same equation. So it's a line laying on top of itself. Um, well, it's not actually all real numbers. I'm sorry, that's not the best way to phrase it. Actually, technically, it's infinitely many solutions. I'm sorry. And there is a difference there. Okay, infinitely many solutions versus all real numbers. I'm very sorry for that confusion. Okay. Huh? There isn't a symbol for that, unfortunately. You just have to write it out. Now, it doesn't show up very much, um, so you really don't. It, it just shows up in these, in these cases where the equations are the same. Now, the reason why it's infinitely many solutions versus all real numbers is because not all real numbers will satisfy this equation. Okay? It's only the, the numbers, the x's and y's, that will satisfy that equation that are actually solutions, so you have infinitely many of those because, you know, lines go on for forever, but it's, it's not actually all real numbers that, that make it work, okay? So it's infinitely many solutions. Okay, let's look at number 29. Now, 29 does not begin with one of our equations solved for one of the variables, however, it is very easy to solve one of those equations for one of the variables. Which equation is easily solvable for one of the variables? The bottom one, and which variable should it be solved for? X. Okay, because the only thing we have to do to solve for X there is add the 6Y to the other side. All we have to do is add the 6Y to the other side, so we get that x is equal to 6y plus 6, and then we can substitute this expression for x in the other equation. You always want to use parentheses because usually there is something that needs to be distributed. Okay, so we are substituting 6y plus 6 for x in the other equation. So we've got negative 3 times 6y plus 6 plus 7y plus 4. So distribute the negative 3, negative 18y minus 18. We need to combine these y's because they're on the same side. 
So that's negative 11y. Y is by itself, so yes, we just need to move the constant. And then divide by negative 11, so y is equal to negative 2. That's only half the solution, though. We also need the x. So we've got to go back over here. The easy thing to do is to plug it into uh, the equation that we've already solved for x because we can just plug in negative 2 and very easily get that x is negative 6. So our solution is negative 6, negative 2. These are very easy to confirm. Plug it back into, I plug it into the other equation and make sure that negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18 plus 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, so 18 minus 14 is 4. Okay, it's an equation. You can always check it. Um, now, I will give you a heads up. Convenient thing about these, all of these have whole numbers as answers. So if you get a fraction, something's going wrong somewhere. Okay? All of these have whole numbers as their answers. So if you get a fraction as an answer, you need to go back and check a sign or something like that. Okay, now, um, 34. Okay, 34. We're going to solve this one by substitution. Now, it's not as cut and dry as the, the previous ones that we've done. And honestly, if given the choice, I would not do this one by substitution. But it is possible, okay? It is possible to do it by substitution. So really, in this case, I have the choice. Um, I can solve either equation for either of my variables because there's nothing that's really uh, simple, so to speak, in solving for one another. So personally, if I had to choose, I would choose the second one. And I would solve the second one for x, and here's my reason. Because if I'm solving the second one for x, I get to add the 4y. So that's one less negative that I have to deal with because it becomes positive when I move it to the other side. Now the whole dividing by 5 thing is not very convenient, but the other equation wouldn't work out evenly either. I'd end up with fractions still there. Um, so... I'm going to divide everything by 5, and that's something that a lot of people tend to forget is to divide everything by 5. That will mess you up if you don't. All right, and I'm going to plug it into the other equation for x. Now, I do a lot of things without calculators, and you should too, especially if your goal is to end up in calculus, because you've got to be able to do stuff like this without a calculator. If you multiply 3 times a fraction, you only multiply the 3 times the number on top. So that ends up being 12 over 5y. Same thing with the 22 over 5. Only multiply the top, so that's 66 over 5. Now, if I'm trying to combine 12 over 5y with 2y, then I'm going to express 2 without a calculator. I'm going to express 2 as something over 5. Well, 10 divided by 5 is 2. So I'm going to rewrite that as 10 over 5. So then I can just add uh, 12 plus 10 is 22. So that's 22 over 5y minus 66 over 5. Yeah, now we need to add 66 over 5, but something that would honestly make this a little bit easier so that I don't have to deal with the fractions anymore, I can multiply everything by 5, and that will get rid of those fractions. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to multiply this entire equation by 5 to get rid of the fractions. Okay, uh, 22 times 5 is 110, and it was negative. How did I do that so quickly? 20 times 5 is 100, and 2 times 5 is 10. So, so no more fractions, right? 
Now, I'm not saying you have to do this completely by hand without touching your cup with it. I'm just suggesting it's good practice, okay? <clears throat> Plus 66. So, what is that? Um, 40, negative 44? Oh, and looky here, all of a sudden it comes out even. Well, not necessarily even, but it's a whole number. Okay. Y is negative 2. Plug it back in to this one over here. That is negative 8 fifths. Minus 22 over 5, that's negative 30 over 5, which is negative 6. So my answer is negative 6, negative 2. Say that to the left. Interesting instance. Okay, so crash course on fractions without a calculator here. Don't be completely <coughs> intimidated by that part. Okay, don't be completely intimidated by that part. I'm more concerned about you understanding the process of the substitution. If you got to use your calculator for the fractions, that's fine. I was just showing you how not to. Yes. What with the fractions?